originally launching in 1979 as a commercial-free network, Nickelodeon has created some of the best original programming for kids and adolescents that television has to offer, whether it's cartoons, live-action sitcoms, or wacky game shows. Welcome back to Film Shack. Today, we prepared for you the 10 best Nickelodeon shows ever. Number 10. Cat Dog. Cat Dog. Cat Dog. Alone in the world is a little cat dog. Cat Dog. Cat Dog. Cat Dog is R. Brothers, with, as the name implies, a cat at one end and a dog on the other. Basic questions of biology aside, this is a situation rife with opportunities for chaos. While Cat is bossy and fastidious, Dog is dopey and clueless, so they're bound to clash. Whether they're trying to beat their rival up a mountain or are lost at sea, there's plenty of conflict and lots of very cartoony slapstick violence. The series makes some attempts at injecting a moral here or there, but they fall flat. The focus is on looniness, silliness, and out-of-control antics with very little in the way of redeeming qualities. This can be just the ticket for some kids, although the bizarreness of the concept is enough to leave most parents shaking their heads. Number 9. The Fairly Odd Parents Odd parents, fairly odd parents Can let you live when you have a kid with fairly odd parents Yeah, right! One of Nick's longest-running shows, The Fairly Odd Parents is the brainchild of Butch Hartman, a former writer and director on both Johnny Bravo and Dexter's Laboratory. It's a genius blend of superb animation matched with a highly original concept. If you had fairy godparents, what would you do with them? That's the question that 10-year-old Timmy Turner is asked, who's endowed with magical protectors Wanda and Cosmo, and who frequently makes the most absurd wishes that lead to the most calamitous of consequences. The Fairly Odd Parents is funny, and thankfully, doesn't take itself too seriously leading to a series of entertaining adventures. It was immensely popular with any kid that had their eyes glued to their television sets, and even featured several crossover episodes with Nick's Jimmy Neutron. So now you might be asking, if this show was so well received, why doesn't it rank higher on our list? Well, like The Simpsons, The Fairly Odd Parents had a series of well-crafted seasons, and then kind of dipped in quality as the show progressed. Not that the cartoon was bad in its later years, but it certainly wasn't as strong as the first few seasons. Still, this Nicktoon is one of the network's most popular and recognized, which more than qualifies it for a spot. Number 8. Rocco's Modern Life Rocco's Modern Life Rocco's Modern Life Rocco's Modern Life is a satirical cartoon about an Australian wallaby named Rocco, voiced by Carlos Alasraki, who is trying to adapt to American life with the help of his buddy's heifer. Tom Kenny, and Philbert, Mr. Lawrence. Between his grumpy neighbors and his obnoxious boss at the kind of a lotto comic shop, Rocco finds his new American peers to be a little unruly, but he manages to let their positive qualities overshadow their crazy ways. Each episode usually involves Rocco's efforts to undo the effects of some wacky predicament caused by Heifer's naivety or Philbert's neurosis, unless it's actually Rocco who's to blame for the day's crisis. Rocco's Modern Life isn't your run-of-the-mill kids cartoon, thanks to a fair amount of edgy content. True, most of the sexual innuendos and euphemisms will sail over very young kids' heads, and the worst of them actually were censored during the show's original run, but the same isn't true for more worldly tweens who will pick up on the grown-up humor. This certainly isn't the first cartoon to push the envelope on content, and its content isn't as ribbled as, say, South Park, but the iffy stuff has enough of a presence to warrant some thought on your part. There is some merit to how the stories promote tolerance among its vastly different characters, but even that is often lost in the overall quirkiness. Number 7. The Ren and Stimpy Show That water does look pretty inviting. Okay, here I come. Disturbed, depraved, and dumbfounded, don't even begin to describe the next Nicktoon on our list. The Ren and Stimpy Show is the kind of program you watch now as an adult and think, how in the world were they able to advertise this as a kid show? Nothing, and we mean nothing about Ren and Stimpy qualifies it as a kid show. That might be an oversimplification, but you watch these adventures of a paranoid chihuahua and a dim-witted cat and tell us why it's qualified as a kid show. 
Most of the gags are highly cerebral and gross, making mothers across the nation want to shield their child's eyes, and it was exactly the buffer that made us all the more interested in watching it. Created by the screwball minds of John Crick Falusi and Bob Camp, Ren and Stimpy was a visceral experience like no other. The plots of the episodes made little to no sense in the grand scheme of things, which featured the titular characters trying to make it as rubber nipple salesmen, or search low and wide for a long-lost fart. But it is that spontaneous absurdity that catapulted Ren and Stimpy to the heights that it soared, making us cringe and uncontrollably laugh at the disturbing events taking place on our TV screens. Number 6. Invader Zim Speaking of disturbed, it doesn't get more disturbing and outright hilarious than Nick's 2001 cartoon, Invader Zim. It would be interesting to know what was going on in the creator Jonan Vasquez's mind when he thought of this delicious tale of a dim-witted alien trying to infiltrate and conquer Earth, who fails at every turn. Zim has an ego the size of the planet he's trying to surmount and is continuously cut short by his human rival Dib and his clueless defected robot Gurr, who honestly steals every scene that he's in. Backed by some of the most cutting-edge animation at the time, and still breathtaking by today's standards, Invader Zim is like a mystery science theater's fan's dream come true. It seamlessly blends sci-fi, action, and comedy into one twisted and hilarious cartoon, with superb voice acting and visionary direction. As good as it was, Zim was unable to find a supporting audience, and was cancelled after only three brief seasons. Its legacy lives on, however, and today, you can't turn into a hot topic without looking at a t-shirt of Gurr slurping on a bubblegum and chocolate slushie. Number 5. Doug Conceived from the drawings he did in his sketchbook during the 1980s, Jim Jenkins' Doug is another brilliant animated coming-of-age tale in Nick's vast roster. This time the story is about Douglas, Doug Yancey Funny, who has recently moved into his new hometown of Bluffington. Doug sets the tone of each episode by narrating as he writes in his journal, dealing with things that the average sixth grader would run into, like his crush on Patty Mayonnaise, his friendship with Skeeter Valentine, or run-ins with his bully, Roger Klotz. One of the first three cartoons created by Nick, the other two being Ren and Stimpy and Rugrats. Doug explores the awkward and strange time that is adolescence. Doug Funny is a normal kid that most preteens watching this show could relate to. He loves his favorite rock band, The Beats, an obvious homage to The Beatles, tries to express his feelings for the girl of his dreams, Patty, and frequently daydreams that he's a superhero that wears underwear on the outside. Quail Man, voiced by voice acting legend Billy West. What hasn't this guy done? Doug remains a high point in Nicktoons for its exceptional writing and originality. Number 4. Hey Arnold. Hey, how far does this bus go anyway? What difference does it make? When it gets to the end of the line, we'll just ride it back again. The gurney is the destination, man. Hey Arnold centers on the everyday life of a fourth grader named Arnold, voiced by Philip Van Dyke, who has his share of ups and downs in his big city life. He lives in a boarding house run by his grandparents, and between their assortment of quirky residents and his array of equally unique classmates, Arnold never wants for adventure. Often, he and his peers, including his best buddy, Gerald, Jameel Walker-Smith, and his social nemesis and secret admirer, Helga, Francesca Marie Smith, find themselves in sticky situations, and it's Arnold's level head that typically saves the day. This show fits right in with the colorful array of cartoon characters who grace the TV screen these days, and kids will be drawn to the offbeat personalities among the cast. Hey Arnold's unique artistic style, which gives its characters football-shaped heads, foot-tall afros, and other exaggerated features, is an exciting blend of oddities that make for a fun visual experience to accompany the stories. Number 3. Rugrats the second longest running animated series on television, behind The Simpsons, and perhaps more responsible for the success of Nickelodeon than any other show. Rugrats follows the adventures of a group of baby friends, led by Tommy Pickles, voiced by Elizabeth Daly, a toddler who hatches more schemes than his child psychology studying mother could begin to imagine. Red-haired Chucky, Christine Cavanaugh, is the timid one, 
and some of the series' most endearing episodes feature his friends helping him overcome his many fears. Twins Phil and Lil, Kath Susie, add some kid-friendly hilarity as they munch on bugs and store food in their diapers. Decidedly less sweet is the infamous Angelica, Cheryl Chase, a bigger kid who can talk to adults or babies and doesn't hesitate to lie to either audience. Although the series focuses mainly on the baby's escapades, often as they wander far from their parents, the show promotes family love and cohesiveness, right along with the kid's independent spirit. Adults can appreciate the way Rugrats gently pokes fun at neurotic parenting, as well as the inherent humor in trying to raise kids correctly. In regards to Angelica's naughty antics, most young viewers will be able to categorize them as bad behavior. Number 2. Avatar – The Last Airbender With the Avatar's help, we can get it back on the right path and begin a new era of love and peace. Completely different from every other show they've produced, Avatar – The Last Airbender stands alone as Nick's most artistic series to date. It doesn't feature wacky and irreverent humor at the focal point. There is humor to be had, especially in characters like Sokka, but Airbender is rather a sweeping epic told in anime-esque style. It's a huge milestone for the network's ability to present a deeply engaging story that even though is aimed at kids, treats these kids with respect. There are dark adult themes here that Airbender is not afraid to explore. Oftentimes, the good guys do not come out on top, and the show is not afraid to dive into the troubling psyche of characters like Zuko, a kid who is filled with rage and struggling to find his identity. It is each character's journey and the relationship they form with each other that completely immerse the audience into the world it presents. Besides the top-notch storytelling, Avatar is backed up by some of the most beautiful animation ever put to screen. The elemental fights between the characters are absolutely breathtaking, whether it be stylistic patterns of water bending or the rugged advancements of earth bending. Paired with an excellent told story, likable and fully realized characters, a fantastic musical score, and some of the best casted voice acting ever. And you have yourself a unique experience unlike any other. Number 1. SpongeBob SquarePants what are you doing? You have a loose thread. Huh? So? I want to pull it. As well crafted as The Last Airbender and as influential as Rugrats was, there's no denying the longevity and timeless humor of SpongeBob SquarePants. Perhaps the network's most popular cartoon character ever, SpongeBob has made an impact like no other. The baby of creator Stefan Hellenberg, the show depicts the wacky adventures of fry cook SpongeBob SquarePants his dim-witted best buddy Patrick, his aquatic squirrel friend Sandy Cheeks, his curmudgeon neighbor Squidward, his crustacean cheapskate boss Mr. Krabs, and his pet snail Gary. The tale of a talking sponge who lives in a pineapple under the sea probably wouldn't seem like the plot for the biggest kid show ever made, but that's pretty much what it became. There are many things that make SpongeBob work, be it the unique aquatic setting or the spot one Eamon voice acting, especially from Tom Kenny, who plays the titular sponge. The biggest charm of the animated series, however, is the humor. Their sight gags and cutaway pranks galore that will leave anyone, be it a 13-year-old or a 30-year-old, crying from laughter. And that's the biggest draw. The fact that SpongeBob is so goofy, unique, and downright funny. The writing doesn't get any better than classic episodes like the Krusty Krab training video, Chocolate with Nuts, or Ripped Pants. While the quality certainly took a dip after Hellenberg's and most of the original writer's absence, everything from those first four seasons is complete gold, arguably making SpongeBob the king of Nickelodeon and top contender on this list. We would like to invite you to share your opinion with us. Do you agree with our list? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications bell. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye!